Hi folks, welcome to part two of the grinding wheel balancer. Let's finish up machining the base. Let's send this out to anodize. We're gonna make a fixture. Then we're gonna assemble it and try to balance a grinding wheel. Welcome to another Wednesday widget. We're using the new Saunders Machine Works modular vice system we really like it. We came up with this idea uh, really out of necessity to machine these larger parts. It has something that's versatile and really just easy to set up and, and quick to set up and, and less hassle. Starting off with our Superfly 3000 RPM at 2100 surface feet, or we've had some requests for, I think they call it BC, new to me term, but 660 surface meters at 45 inches a minute, or about 1140 millimeters per minute, 15 thou per tooth, or about 0.38 millimeter. Some quick spotting and absolutely some great points recently. You don't always have to spot, especially when you're using drills uh, like the 135 degree tip drills. What I do like is look at how that drill is drilling. It's whisper quiet, but really good chip evacuation. Quarter inch drill or 6.35 millimeters. Got that one memorized. 2700 RPM, 180 surface feet or 54 meters per minute, 8.25 plunge and we're doing the fusion pack cycle where it does a partial retract really helps break the chip and facilitate chip evacuation engraving with one of my favorite tools to do engraving with these days the lakeshore 20 degree 20 thou ball two flute end mill use all the rpms you've got two thou feed per tooth in aluminum be careful to not go too deep one and a half thou depth of cut just want that ever so slight engraving that looks so crisp it's only about 0.04 millimeters doesn't raise a burr i really like it it's always nice when you can to engrave in the same operation that you face the part because engraving will betray any inaccuracy in how the part's positioned uh, along the xy plane so that's one way to make this look good is again do it in the same op you face So here I got stuck. We've got the engraving done. We've got the holes drilled. We, we added these vial uh, bubbles later. Now I need to walk around the part and I really wanted to do it in one setup. It just was going to make things easier, especially uh, with the chamfer. So what's the right thing to do? Let's make a quick fixture. And it really didn't take very long. We used the same modular vice system, just adjusted one out a little bit, put a piece of aluminum in there. Now we are spanning a pretty good distance. Uh, one of the tricks as you come across a part like this, in case you do have any chatter, take a rubber doorstop. Now, yes, this is not what you do when you need to hold, you know, sub one thou accuracy, but if you just push, uh, and we find a rubber doorstop under there ever so slightly, you're not trying to lift the part up, you're just trying to let something exist in there to just soak up a little bit of the vibration. It can help either reduce or even eliminate some of that harmonics or chatter from the part as you're going across it. drilling a couple holes and then we read them for dowel pins. And it's just so nice because it makes you make the right decision. It makes you have confidence in what you're doing. We dropped our part on top of it. The dowel pins held it perfectly in place, threw some cap screws in there with nuts underneath it. That meant we didn't have to tap the part, just made it all the much easier to do this. And we'll put this into our fixture pile. We'll recycle it at later for some other use. The pins were such a good fit. We actually had to get some vice grips just to snug them out. Uh, but that to me is a good thing. Now I've got full access to the part profile. Of course, I do all that and then I goof on my cam. I wasn't quite deep enough with my tool, so let's hit pause, let's go back, let's fix it. 2D adaptive with our go-to quarter inch or 6.35 millimeter three flute end mill. Make sure under geometry, 
when you do this, you have stock contours checked. That pulls in the stock from your setup, which here is really important. I want to make sure I maintain a constant engagement as I walk around this part, especially since we are doing about a one inch depth of cut. So that's about four times the diameter of the tool, which is totally fine. It's just, I don't wanna dive that tool into a bunch of material I didn't think it was going to be there. So all the more reason to make sure you get your programming right. And it looks great. You got good chip evacuation. We're forming a real chip like going back to our speeds and feeds intro video where we talk about chip thinning and the consequences of taking too thin of a cut. But here, it sounds good, it looks good, surface finish is great, makes me happy. Putting a nice heavy chamfer on it, all the RPMs you've got again, two and a half thou feed per tooth, or about 0.06 millimeters per tooth to machine that 40 thou chamfer or about one millimeter chamfer. Looks really nice and I wanna get rid of those sharp corners before we send it out to anodize to avoid any anodizing cracking. Pull off our part, pull off our fixture. This is what I love about this modular vice system. We pull off the talons, we add the included solid bar, and then the tiny vice clamps on the right side are reversible. One side is serrated, the other is smooth. So now I can hold that workpiece that has the sides machined and we're not going to mar it. Awesome. Coming across it with the Superfly to give it a good clean look and a clean deck and that same chamfer around it. Throw on an angle block and let's tip those uprights on their side. We didn't in the last Wednesday widget uh, machine the holes in the bottom of them. This is makes for easy work. We use a machinist square, get that thing trammed up really quickly and easily. I was curious to see how flat this would be. Our Heimer is metric, so for us in the Imperial world, uh, I don't think in metric units, so they're obviously much more extreme, but it was shockingly flat as we jogged across it. That was awesome. Otherwise, your typical spot, drill, and then we head over to the flex arm, tap these guys for quarter 20. So before we send these out to anodize, the parts had slightly different finishes or patinas or looks to them, and I wanted to try to homogenize that. So I had this idea, and guess what? It didn't work very well, which was to put a Scotch-Brite pad underneath an orbital sander. Two reasons. One, I've got tendonitis in my arm again, but also a better process, a better recipe going forward. So this didn't work, but it's too big of a part, and it's too awkward to put it in our tumbler. I don't like sandblasting things, but I want a way to create a really nice, consistent look. Before we worry too much about that, let's pack this up, let's send it off to anodize. We just published an article called How to Outsource Anodizing. This summarizes the 10 years of experience we have outsourcing anodized parts. All of the tips and tricks that we've learned and how to deal with anodizers, how to get good parts, how to deal with surface quality, how to deal with thicknesses, even how to submit a purchase order. We've got a sample form that we use to submit. What tap sizes to use, how to think about thickness, all those terminology card here to read that article. Let's fast forward two weeks. Let's put it together. Let's see how this works with the bearings, the fit, and let's see if it's functional. We are done. I think this looks awesome. Two things, one, I'm thinking about doing a video in the future building another arbor, because obviously this video is no good if you don't already own the arbor, and I don't particularly like the one it came with, so why buy that whole device just for this arbor? So, well, more coming on that. Second thing, let's balance the wheel. We realized, let's make this a separate video so we're not forcing everyone to watch the content they just watched, so card here to the follow-up video where we go through and balance a wheel. As always, folks, thanks for watching, take care. See you next Wednesday.